Nicholas, it's brilliant to have you here today. Thank you so much for being with us. Pleasure. And um, for those who are watching sort of after the event, you, you've been in today working with our scholars, our music scholars. You ran Masterclass this afternoon, which I know was brilliant and the children really benefited from. So thank you for your wisdom. Thank you for your input. And uh, I'm sure they've taken away loads of great tips and advice on performing and so on. But how was it from your side of things? Nick, it was so amazing to see because Often, I, I, as you know, I do a lot of education work. I go into schools, I go and you know, give, give some coaching and give some masterclasses. Yeah. And it was so wonderful to one, see the standard of the students here. Yeah. No wonder why they, they're scholars, because you know, hats off to them, you know, they deserve to be there. Um, the, the performance standard was fantastic, it really was. And their personalities came across not only to me meeting them straight away, yeah. but also came across on, on stage. I know it was only an intimate little, yeah. little gathering we had. But even that, they communicated to me as you know, as a musician, yeah. and that was really, really lovely to see. And so it was, really, it was really wonderful. Also, what I enjoyed particularly, and it's always a bit of a challenge as a professional musician when you go in and you give some tips yeah. to some young, to, to some young musicians. You want to build them up, of yeah. course. That's so important. But you also need to give them those tips. Yeah, critique you know, it. Yeah. yeah, tips of the trade almost. You know, yeah, yeah. and and. It's a fine balance, and sometimes you can kind of suggest something to a young artist, and they kind of replay it exactly the same as you just said. Yeah. Not quite. Well, I mean, let's try again, yeah. and then you try and push. The students today, every tiny, tiny bit of direction I did, nuanced with them, and they changed their performance straight yeah. away when we when we redid it. So that was lovely to see how clear they they took direction. And I always say to all of them, and I said them, to them today, bear in mind. I am one person, you know, any art form, whether it's music, whether it's drama, it's all subjective. Yeah. So I say, take what I'm saying, but you, if you disagree with it, go and do what you want to do. Yeah. You know, it's, it's just something for them to think about. Well, that's lovely. I mean, what, one of the things I really appreciated when I was in the room, I wasn't able to be there for the whole thing, but hearing some of the performances and then your sort of feedback given, was just the maturity with which they received it, which is, you know, to yeah. what you're saying, really. I was really hugely impressed with the fact that they just... They really did listen, take it on board, and put it into practice. And and it's hard because you know no one loves to. You, you all just want to be told you're amazing. Yeah. And so when there's a bit of critiquing, you sort of you know. Mm. Yeah. So, but you can see them kind of okay, taking that on board, and I'm actually going to try and put it Rise into practice. Right, the challenge. Yeah. And also, what's difficult, and I found it incredibly great what they did today. I and I said this to them in in the masterclass. Yeah. I'd far rather play to five thousand people none of which who I know, than to four of my closest friends. Well, they were all playing in front of their friends and their, their individual teachers. Yeah. And then obviously you came in the room as well. So I had a bit of extra pressure then, Mr. Yeah. Um But, you know, that's incredibly tough to do. You it know, really and they, they really did most of the challenge. So, so it was lovely to see and lovely to hear them perform. I'm looking forward to, to hearing them later well, on. Well, we're today. delighted that tonight you're the guest speaker at the, the dinner. And normally we would have parents in and that would be a great event. But, you know, with COVID, we've got restrictions on the rest of it still. So, you know, it's a bit of a scaled down event, but, but you're the guest speaker, but you're also going to be the performer, you know, the guest performer for this evening, which is great. Now, you and I have known each other for a few years now, and, and I was absolutely blown away uh, the first time I met you, uh, not only because you're just a great person, and it was lovely to get to meet you, and just really, really liked you very much, but also your story, and, and uh, you are a classical pianist, you're a concert pianist and an amazing pianist, Thanks. but with, you know, a twist, <laughs> really, let's be fret, fret. Yeah, with, with, uh, uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> with, like with a twist, and so it'd be great for, for those people, you know, maybe who might be watching this who don't know your story, Absolutely. if you could sort of tell me again. Yeah, yeah. well, I, for me, and you're so right, and I love that, I might have to lift that, you know, concert pianist with a twist, so <laughs> I am a concert pianist, and obviously pre-Covid I used to, you know, travel around, and as you know, I would always be in a different, different country yeah. every kind of, every other month. Um, performing with orchestra, performing in, in solo recitals, you know, here, there and everywhere. Um, but the twist is that I was born without my right hand. Mm. So obviously, as you know, it's not the first career choice you thought <laughs> I'd have picked by any means, <laughs> by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah. But I specialise in, in what's called left hand alone repertoire. Mm. And it's a very specific repertoire from the 19th and 20th century. Mm. And also for me, especially in, in the time we're in at the moment, it goes beyond that. It goes about inclusion and disability actually being yeah. seen in the arts. Because often we see it in sports, which yes. is fantastic. Yeah. But we tend not to see a great deal of disability in art forms, which is a shame because there's a huge amount of hugely talented 
disabled young artists who yeah. are there, but because they don't see many visible people on the stages, yeah. in theatres, in Where's music, the inspiration? They, yeah. they, 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 there's not that correlation. So yeah. I'm, um, I'm very proud of, of the work I get to do, especially in, in schools and, and coming into to, to, you know, lovely schools like this. Yeah. Um, and just to share, to share my story of re re resilience, really, I suppose, yeah. is the word I would use about my younger self. Yeah. Because I didn't start to play the piano till, till I was 14. 14? Right. I, I thought it was 12, which was late <laughs> enough. But it was actually 14. It was 14, yeah. which, as you know, you know from your reaction, is, is, it's incredibly late. I had a, a normal childhood, you know, I, I went to normal state school, my parents just had normal sales jobs, you know, they weren't musicians either. And so for me to enter into the, the world of classical music was so foreign to my parents and, and obviously to, to myself. Yeah. So how did it start though? What was the, what was your initial, you know, encounter if you like with the piano or, or you know, what made you want to be concentrated? I remember that moment, literally like it was yesterday, when I was in my school assembly there was one very good pianist, who's a still a friend of mine today, oh. who um, was performing a piece of Beethoven as part of a prize giving in assembly. Yeah. And I'd seen her play before, and we all knew she was amazing, you know, yeah. before I loved her. And I saw her play this Beethoven, and by the end crashing chords of Beethoven's Valkyrie Sonata, my dream had literally been ignited right. in such a way I, ne I literally had no interest in classical music before that moment wow. and it was like someone had switched a switch in my head yeah and it was ignited and i just remember even then there and then at 14 and with one hand you know everything kind of stacked against me at that point yeah. thinking to myself i feel like i'm put on this earth to communicate yeah. and my way i'm going to do that is through music right. i remember thinking that exact thing at the age 14. so that really was the the kind of spark so what, what happened next because at that point, were you, did you play the piano not at all? Not enough. Right, literally not at all. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> so you, how did you then begin? So I home? went home and asked for a piano. Now, as you know, they're not cheap items <laughs> of furniture to buy. <laughs> so I didn't get a piano, I got a very small keyboard, yeah. um, which I equally loved. And yeah. I started to kind of play around with it, you know, right. learn how to play, start reading the notes and teaching the notes myself. And slowly but surely started to get getting quite good at it, which then was a bit of a self fulfilling prophecy yeah. because it was like I was getting good at it, people were praising me, I practiced more, I was yeah. getting better, people were praising me, you know, and it was yeah. that whole loop of like, oh, I'm actually, something's happening here, yeah. you know, something was changing in a, in a really positive way. Yeah. So that's how it started. And then there was one defining moment which I, which I always like to share because I was sharing with students earlier actually. Yeah. I was also very much. I knew nothing of classical music. I'd never really heard, apart from this Beethoven sonata that my yeah. friend played. I didn't know what Chopin sounded like. I didn't know what Rachmaninoff sounded like. So I started to listen to classical classical music radio, mm. so classic FM, for instance, yeah. because obviously they play a broad snapshot of pieces, and you can decide what you like. Yeah. And so I was practicing upstairs in my bedroom, practicing a piece that I was working on, and my dad shouted up the stairs, went, Nick, turn, turn the radio down. And I shouted downstairs, said, Dad, it's not the radio, it's me. <laughs> then there was definitely silence downstairs from Mum and Dad, then they both came up and they were like, you're getting quite good now, Nick. Do you want piano lessons? So that's kind of... You hadn't even had any lessons No, before. this was just me self-teaching, wow. and you know, okay. it, was, it was a very slow pro process. I used to learn by ear and with notes and kind of count the notes up. And, you know, it was a slow process, but I enjoyed the process, you nice. know, I enjoyed it. And so that's when I, I started having kind of formal lessons, I suppose. And then very quickly, my teacher came to me and my parents and said, look, I feel that Nicholas is standard. He's ready to go to or audition for a music school. Wow. And, um, and that was, again, a bit of a defining moment for me. And my parents were like, yeah. what, yeah. what is that? What is that? How, How do we do, do it? it? Exactly. Yes. Yeah. And so my, and this is where I suppose, like I mentioned earlier, my resilience came, had to come in mm. to, to its own because my friend who inspired me at, at, at my school assembly went to a very good piano school on Saturdays. Mm. And um, so in my head, I'm like, perfect, I'll, go there. I'll audition for there. Yeah. Great, I know someone there. So I rang up this, the headmistress of this, um, this piano school and she really was one of those kind of old school head mistresses who was so stern you know, ruled with an eye, an eye, this kind of thing, yeah. as opposed to kind of, you know, being encouraging. 
And I remember ringing up and explaining that I was born without my right hand, but my teacher had said that I should come and audition. She said, I can't possibly come and, come and see you and, and, and audition you. She said, because how, how can you possibly get, play scales with two hands? And I said, well, I don't want to play scales with two hands. I want to play music. And she hung up the phone. Wow. And that was my first real kind of negativity and real door slam in my face yeah. where it was like, you, this isn't for you. You Gosh. can't do this. Yeah. You know, and it was, it was that. And so I very quickly had to, I mean, I was obviously upset about it, of course, but I had to kind of dig deep to find that within it to think, actually, how do I go about achieving my dream? Because my dream was still there. It yeah. hadn't been extinguished. And that's, and that's really important. So she didn't quench that desire. It could, kind of gave me more with it. Along, yeah, right? it, I kind of felt down and then very quickly that fire built back up. Mm. I thought, I, I'm going to prove you wrong, really. I'm going to prove you wrong. So, so it's a bit of a catalyst in the yeah. sense. So then so I, what next? Well, then I decided to audition for the Junior Girls all up in London. Okay. So I think that's got be much better and much more, you know, well-known school. Mm. Didn't tell them about my lack of a hand. Okay. <laughs> I learned the first time round. And uh, I went on the day and I remember their faces as they looked at my empty sleeve, you know, as I yeah. walked in thinking they thinking I've got the wrong room or something. Yeah. And I played and I was off the place. And I was off the place on one condition that I specialise in left hand repertoire. Right. And um, and then so I, I studied there for two years and had my sights set on an even bigger challenge of attending the Royal College of Music. Which so, you went on to do. Which I went on to do. And I, and I, I believe I'm right in saying that you, you know, I think you're the first person in 135 years or something yeah, in the history of the, to, to graduate from there. Yeah, which was mad. I mean, obviously, I never knew that for the four years I was studying. I just, you I know, mean, you don't go around kind of thinking, I'm making history, you know, yeah. walking around the corridors. But yeah, on my graduation day, I found that fact out that that was... Uh, but how was that audition process for you getting into that? Because that's, I mean, it's highly sought after the places to study there are, you know, like Yeah, but well, there was only seven piano places that year. Right. And there's thousands of all over, yeah. they do all over the world. international auditions as well. Yeah. So I knew kind of the odds were definitely set Stacking. against me and I was, you know, all of these analogies come to mind, salmon upstream and <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and I just, I, I literally could see it in my mind's eye, Nick. I really, really could. I could see me graduating from the Royal College of Music. I could see me in my cap and gown receiving my scroll wow. I couldn't see me making history in the 130 you know, know that, that really, part, but yeah. I could really see and taste and smell the whole thing about me attending there yeah. it felt so real to me yeah. that when I went into my auditions I was so focused I mean I rehearsed practice so 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 much I probably never worked as hard in my life really yeah. and then when I was off the place, I mean, obviously there was tears of yeah. joy, tears of happiness, and, and I couldn't believe I'd done it, quite frankly. I really couldn't believe I'd done it because so many people, including my teacher at the Guild Hall, had told me that I wouldn't get in. Oh, really? Had told just, me that just I just be wouldn't, realistic. I wouldn't this get This is probably in. not yeah. going to happen. Yeah. And let's face it, thousands of people going for seven places, there was a very strong chance you yeah. wouldn't. Yeah. But you, you went through that, you graduated. Now, actually, the very first time I ever heard you perform, I don't know, I don't think I've ever shared this with you, but was that quite a special event that took place quite soon after that with about 80,000 people. Oh, just a casual 86,000 people. Yeah. yeah. So, well, remind, so that was... That was the, the Paralympics. closing ceremony yeah. of the Paralympics. It was, 2012 and, Paralympics. Yeah, and I was there, Emma and I were there, and um, we left the children at home, oops. Uh, but uh, <laughs> well, we had an amazing time, and you were performing alongside some heroes of mine as well. Coldplay. Coldplay. The band. Pretty amazing. And, and Rihanna on the swing of And Rihanna, hands. yeah, what more could you wish what for? What more could you wish yeah. for? Yeah. So that was pretty, I it mean, that, was, was, that, can't, that must have been quite soon after you graduated. Uh, two and a half, three weeks. Right, wow. So when I got the call for that, I had to pretend that my diary was full. You know, I was like, <laughs> are you available on July? Oh, let me check. just check. Yeah. And it's obviously empty. Yeah. And, that, and that single defining moment ignited my international career. Yeah. Because it, was, it wasn't only the fact it was, it was in front of 86,000 people, it was the fact it was broadcast to half a billion people half worldwide. Billion. And that is what launched, so from literally the next week, I you was invited were, to my you first were, international were. tour, and then it went from there. Yeah. So that, I am so thankful for that moment. It was incredible. You know, that it was an amazing event, and uh, as you know, what a great catalyst for, for the rest of your career. Now, you, you, you've toured all over the world, you've performed in all sorts of venues, and um, you still been, I mean, obviously, lockdown's been difficult, because that's been a, put a, a real, um, well, 
massive uh, stop to, to most of the performing arts, let's, mm. let's be honest. But, but I know you also have a great privilege of, of speaking at events and you've done a lot of that online, even during lockdown and just telling your story and inspiring and motivating people. So you're doing a lot of that stuff as well? Yeah, I mean, it's been, you know, that, as you know, I've always been a bit of a, you know, I like to talk. <laughs> and, and like I said, when I was first, that my dream was first ignited, it was about communicating yeah. and communicating through music, but now, you know, communicating through, through words. I mean, I never thought I would be speaking to big corporate, yeah. huge big blue chip companies yeah. about my story and, and about how to motivate workforces and things. Yeah. But it's a part of my job outside of the performing, yeah. which I just absolutely enjoy. Well, your story is really really massively compelling and, and inspiring, and uh, and I guess not just for children. Though I I know I I know I've seen it. You know, I had you in, into my last school as well, and, and the impact you had on the children was profound, but also on the adults. And also, on, I'm sure you have the same thing with those in the corporate world and so on that you're speaking to as well, because your story is, is, is amazing. Um, so good. So we are really looking forward to you performing tonight and, and sharing your story with the children and just inspiring them and motivating them. So thank you so much. For, thank you. Thank, thank you for coming to St Michael's. And, um, and I mean, it's just a real joy to see you again and to have you here. Likewise, it's thank such you. a pleasure to be here and meet the, meet the students. And, you know, I'm really looking forward to hearing yeah hearing their performances again later. Yeah. Well. I might hear, I'm hearing a bit of drama later as well. Yes, there's some, there'll be some yeah. drama duels as well, I think. And, and um, yeah, they're, they're a pretty special bunch. They're very, and, very special. Um, and we're, you know, we're really proud of their success and, and what they're achieving. But I'm sure that they'll be motivated and inspired by your story tonight again. So thank you very much. Thank you.